tremendous concern. Now, I wanted to show you uh, the relationship between the employment, the population rate, and the unemployment rate in a somewhat different way. And I also wanted to look at some specific groups. So if you bear with me, I'm going to try a new program. Uh, uh, there's an interesting story behind this, which I can tell you. But I was contacted by a company called Eca Epic Systems. And they told me they have a new program to show dynamic relationships and data. Would I be interested in using it? And I said, I'm giving a talk in a few days. Here's some data. Maybe you can, can, can uh, use these. And they put this together for me. I thought it was kind of neat. So let me describe this to you. We're going to look at three groups, men age 20 and over. They're in blue. Uh, women age 20 and over who are in green, which is a little bit light, and uh, teenagers who are in red. And what I have on the vertical axis is the unemployment rate. So the unemployment rate uh, could go uh, from as low as 1% up to 23% over the, this period. This shows you 1948, when the Bureau of Labor Statistics first started collecting these data. Uh, and on the horizontal axis, I have the employment to population rate. So these are the two series that I just defined for you and showed you uh, the trends. And now what we can do is look at how unemployment and employment uh, co-vary for these different groups. And a movement uh, in this direction, in a um, south, uh, southwestern direction, is an indic indication uh, that employment is declining, although the unemployment rate is declining as well. You would expect the relationship to be when the share of the population that's employed is increasing that the unemployment rate would fall. So you might think kind of ex-ante that you'd have a downward sloping relationship. And you see that's what we have for men. In a moment you'll see we had a curious pattern for women in the beginning years uh, of the opposite. While employment was growing, unemployment was rising as well for women. But since the mid-80s, women have started to look like men in terms of their uh, behavior in the labor market. Uh, and for teenagers, you'll see uh, very variable employment, very, very cyclical employment for teenagers. So let me show you uh, how this works. Uh, so, so you see the additional years being added uh, with the darker ball. Looks a little bit like a video game I used to play called Pong. <laughs> um, and you can see during, dur during recessions, there was a recession in the early 1970s. Uh, the unemployment rate for all of the groups is going to jump up quite a bit. And then the recession got even worse in 1975. You see the unemployment rate jumping up, then coming back down. And then you'll see the recession in the early 1980s where for teenagers, the unemployment rate goes above the top of the screen. And then let me stop it uh, right here. Uh, I'll stop it in 1985. <coughs> well, 86 will do. Uh, and you see, if you look at men, the kind of expected downward sloping relationship between the unemployment rate and the employment to population rate. And for women, you get this curious pattern, which is the opposite. That while employment was expanding, it was as if so many women were joining the labor force, um, they weren't able to find jobs, and the unemployment rate was rising for women. Uh, for teenagers, you see uh, a tremendous amount of movement up and down in the unemployment rate. And if you watch carefully, you also see the whole graph shifting to the left for teenagers, indicating that the share of teenagers who were employed is declining. Uh, so I'll let this continue. Uh, you also see for men, the proportion employed is declining, while for women, the proportion employed is rising. Okay, and that's one of the major developments in the labor market. It's not a real big, big surprise. Uh, but there's been a dramatic change for the teenagers. The teenagers in uh, fraction employed has gone from a close, uh, close to 50%, a little over 50%, to close to 30%. And if you look at certain groups of teenagers, like black teenagers, uh, the employment rate is even uh, substantially lower. In a lot of what I'm going to show you from here on in, I'm going to leave out teenagers. Not that teenage, the youth labor market is unimportant, uh, but I think uh, there are lots of reasons to focus more on the adult labor market. Um, uh, as, especially if we want to look at longer term trends. Uh, and you can also see here since the mid 1980s, we get a downward sloping relationship for women. So when overall employment is expanding, the unemployment rate is now declining for women. The uh, reason for that uh, trend I showed you before um, with the employment to population rate uh, kind of reaching a peak here uh, is because the growth in employment for women has slowed down. Men had always been, not always, but for the last 20 years, the share of men employed has been declining. Uh, for women, there's been slower expansion. Uh, and as a result, we, we haven't returned uh, to the share of the population employed 
uh, that we had in the late, late 1990s. Now to look more closely at the life of the unemployed, I'm gonna draw on two surveys. One is the American Time Youth Survey. This is a survey that is collected by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It was started in 2003, uh, and uh, it continues. The data for 2007 are not yet available. Uh, the survey now is about 12,000 people per year. And uh, the way the survey works is that a representative group of individuals who are actually part of that earlier survey, the current population survey that I mentioned, uh, are interviewed about the preceding day. And the interviewers are pretty skilled about getting them to walk through what they did the previous day and getting them uh, to recall uh, what time they woke up, what was the first thing they did, the next thing they did, how long did they do it, who was with them, uh, and so on. Uh, and we're going to use those data to look at how the unemployed spend their time compared with the employed, with a particular focus on the amount of time devoted to searching for a new job. Uh, then I'll also show you results from what I call the Princeton Affect and Time Survey, or PATS for short. This was a survey that Danny Kahneman and I designed uh, and uh, Gallup implemented for us in the summer of 2006. Uh, what we did literally was to start with the survey from the American Time Use Survey. The BLS gave us the computer program that, they, that the interviewers were using to do uh, the American Time Use Survey. Uh, and then we developed our own module, which we added to the end, uh, where we selected three <coughs> episodes where people were awake uh, during the day, and we probed about how they felt at that time. Uh, we asked uh, on a scale of zero to six, where zero means you didn't feel this way at all, was not part of the experience at all, and six means it was very much part of the experience. How happy did you feel? How sad did you feel? How much pain did you feel? How interested were you in what you were doing? Um, how tired were you? How stressed were you? How sad were you? And I won't go through the process of how we selected those six emotions. Um, I'd be happy to discuss it in more detail later on, uh, but that's the data that we have. Gallup interviewed 4,000, just about 4,000 people for us. Uh, they had a response rate of 37%, which I'm always a little embarrassed to say that. That's actually pretty high for a survey like this. The Gallup polls, which are used to you know, predict who's going to win a primary, usually have a response rate of 20, 25%. Uh, some other polls have much lower response rates. But we try to adjust for the non-respondents as best we can. The data do seem to look a lot like the American Time Use Survey. The American Time Use Survey has a much higher response rate because it's done by the government. Um, people are more cooperative with the government than they are with Gallup. <laughs> okay, so this shows you on the average weekday how the employed in blue and the unemployed in red allocate their time. And I chose weekday here because uh, I'm interested in uh, the biggest contrast between the employed and the unemployed, which is during the week when most of the employed are working. Uh, so you see a few things straight off the bat. First, the unemployed sleep a lot more. <laughs> Over nine hours a day. Uh, the employed are sleeping, I think it's about 7.9 hours per day. And I should also say, this includes some time when people are lying in bed restless, trying to sleep. So if you look at this and say, oh my god, eight hours a day, I don't sleep that much. N neither of these people. Uh, but they're spending that much time in bed. Uh, I, I didn't prepare the same slide for the weekdays, but you'll be pleased to know the employed sleep a lot more on the weekends <laughs> than they do on, on the weekdays, over nine hours on the, uh, on, on the weekends. Um, and uh, what, other, what other results do we see here? They spend about the same amount of time on personal care or eating. The unemployed spend a lot more time in what we call home production, which is doing chores around the house, maybe fixing things. Uh, and also taking care of children, taking care of others. Um, so it seems like uh, sort of sensible that the unemployed, if there's two people in the household, the unemployed person would spend more time uh, doing chores around the house. Uh, then this shows working. The average employed person is working almost seven hours a day. Uh, it's a little bit curious to us, and we haven't fully resolved why we have a few minutes of work time <laughs> for, for the unemployed. Um, this next uh, uh, set of bars shows job search time, and I'm going to look at that in more detail. But on the average workday, an unemployed person spends about two-thirds of an hour searching for a new job. And I'll go into more detail about what that entails. Um, now, that might seem low. Uh, and a certain level, it is low. Another level, I was a bit surprised it was as high as it is. So I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, 
this is the amount of time that employed and unemployed people spend in education and training, about a half an hour uh, a day on average. Um, then we have shopping, getting services, and where you see a big disparity is the amount of time watching television and in the leisure. Uh, so you can see the unemployed are spending almost six hours, five and a half hours uh, a day engaged in leisure or watching television. And I have the numbers on television. The unemployed spend uh, uh, three and a third hours a day during, this is during the whole week, not just during, uh, during weekdays, watching television. Employed people spend two hours. So it's quite a striking number that even the employed people are spending two hours uh, where their main activity is watching television. Um, and you could look at these numbers and say, you know, being unemployed, it's a lot like probably being a college student. They spend a lot of time sleeping, uh, a lot of time uh, socializing and leisure activities, watching television. Maybe unemployment's like leisure. And there's a view in economics, um, I associate it most with the University of Chicago, uh, that unemployment is a decision by people uh, to withdraw from the labor market, and it's like leisure. Uh, I don't think that's the right view uh, of unemployment. And uh, the reason why I don't think it's the right view is people who are unemployed do spend time searching for a job. Uh, and more importantly, they're not very happy with their lives. And I'll show you uh, some evidence on both of those uh, claims. Uh, this is a summary of what counts as job search, according to the American Time Use Survey. And we use the same lexicon in the, Ameri in the uh, uh, PATH survey. Uh, so uh, contacting an employer, sending out a resume, uh, placing an ad or answering an ad, uh, researching about a job, asking about job openings, uh, submitting applications. Uh, all of that uh, is the first level of job search activities. Then going for an interview, uh, preparing for an interview, uh, waiting <laughs> to be interviewed, um, any kind of security that you would have to go through, travel that you would have to go through uh, for uh, interviews. Those are uh, the categories of job search activities that are captured in this survey. This shows you the uh, amount of time on the average day, weekend uh, as well as uh, weekday, uh, spent searching for a job for the employed, the unemployed, and those who are out of the labor force. And obviously you see the unemployed are spending a lot more time than the employed searching for a new job. To give you another kind of take on these numbers, this is everybody, whether they searched or not. Most employed people don't spend any time on a typical day searching for a new job. Uh, only the, 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 the percent is actually about, the, is, is the same as the number of minutes. It's 0.6% of employed people will spend time searching for a new job. 20% of unemployed people on any given day make some effort to search for a new job. Those who do search for a new job spend a considerable amount of time. So those 20% on average spend uh, uh, two hours and 40 minutes searching for a new job. If you look during the week, 20% figure rises to 33%. So a third of unemployed individuals, and this is unemployed based on that definition that I told you earlier, that they made an active effort in the last four weeks. But on any given day, they make an active effort. A third make an active effort, um, uh, which I have to say I, I thought was strikingly high. And then this last group are people who are out of the labor force. People who are out of the labor force are people who are not working, but they haven't made an effort to find a job. Now you might think, well, maybe they're discouraged, or maybe they have made an effort and they just didn't, uh, didn't, didn't mention it in that part of the questionnaire, so they weren't classified as unemployed. Uh, they spend very little time. If they're out of the labor force, they spend very little time looking for a new job. Uh, even if we limit the sample to people who, when they were interviewed three months ago, they were classified as unemployed. They spend very little time looking for a job uh, three months later if they're classified as out of the labor force. Uh, that suggests to me that these categories that the BLS uses uh, are picking up distinctive states. They, they, they certainly are related to the uh, way people are allocating their time. And there's another reason to believe that the classifications that the BLS uses uh, have some meaning. Uh, if you look at what's the chance of finding a new job, so if you compare people who are unemployed and people who are out of the labor force in one month, what's the chance that they are working the next month? The unemployed are much more likely to make a transition from not working to working than are those who are out of the labor force. So all of that suggests that there is some, some, some information 
in how individuals are classified. Uh, now, of course, some of those who are out of the labor force might have just given up. They might think there are no jobs out there for me, and they may be right. Uh, but it still tells us, I think that these data still tell us uh, that uh, paying some attention to the way people are classified, whether they're classified as unemployed or out of the labor force, does tell us about what's likely to happen to them next and does tell us something about the state of the, state of the labor market. Uh, I'm going to come back to talking about uh, the amount of time people spend searching, which, as I mentioned earlier, is really a central idea in economics, but this is one of the first times that we've been able to peer into it and to look at a general sample and see how much time they spend searching for a job, how that relates to their characteristics, and so on. Uh, so I'm going to return uh, to that issue. But before I do, I want to say something about the uh, psychological well-being, subjective well-being of the unemployed. So in our survey, the PATS survey, we asked a very standard question, the same question that's been asked uh, for decades in other surveys, taking all things together, how satisfied are you with your life as a whole these days? Most people are pretty satisfied with their lives. That's not true of the unemployed. 25% of the unemployed say they're very satisfied with their life compared to 45% of the employed. If you look at not satisfied, this combines two categories, uh, not satisfied and not at all satisfied. 27% uh, of the unemployed say they're not satisfied or not at all satisfied with their lives compared to 9% of the employed. Now you might think, which is actually reaction I had at first, too. Uh, maybe the unemployed are just grumpier. Uh, maybe they're just dissatisfied people. Uh, maybe that's why they're unemployed. Who wants to be around somebody who's, who, who's so miserable? Uh, so you could do a couple things to look at that. Whoops. And I did one, but it's not here. Uh, one is uh, to make a regression adjustment and to try to control for characteristics of the individuals. So you could control for their age and their race and their sex and their ethnicity and so on. That doesn't change these at all. You know, Andy sent me this yesterday. I think this uh, gap moves from 20% to 18%. It really doesn't account uh, for much of the gap at all between the unemployed and the employed. And even more convincing, there was a study that was done using data for Germany, looking at longitudinal data, where you could follow the same individual before and after uh, he or she became unemployed. And when you look at the same people, those who become unemployed become a lot more dissatisfied with their life. And very interestingly, even if you look at them three, five years later, they're still dissatisfied with their life. So unemployment seems to have a lasting effect. It seems to scar individuals, which is in a way really quite surprising to people who work in this area because there's a well-known phenomenon in psychology that people tend to adapt. Uh, one of the earlier studies looked at people who became paraplegics or won a lottery. And the general finding is that life satisfaction moves pretty close back to where it was previously, when good things or bad things happen. People have a mechanism of adapting, uh, which is subject of other work that I've done together with, with Danny Kahneman. There are some things people don't adapt well to. One of them is unemployment. It seems to have a lasting effect on them. And in economics, uh, we often puzzle why it is that politicians, why it is that the Federal Reserve Board cares so much about unemployment. Uh, we should care about economic growth. We have lots of models that say what matters in the long run is economic growth. Unemployment is just a little blip. But it's not a little blip in the lives of people, most importantly in the lives of voters. Uh, but I think you know, it suggests that we're missing something uh, very important about unemployment in our models and it causes us to focus too much uh, on growth and not enough on, on, uh, on the business cycle. Uh, we could look with the PATS data at other uh, indicators of uh, subjective well-being. So instead of life satisfaction, uh, which I think has some, so, some potential problems, we could see moment to moment how is it that people recall that they felt. Did they feel happy? Did they feel tired or stressed and so on? Uh, and this shows you uh, for the average employed person, the average unemployed person over the course of the day, uh, how, uh, how, how uh, they rated their happiness. All of these are, are on a zero to six scale. Um, and we get an interesting pattern the unemployed are less happy moment to moment. Interestingly, they're less tired. I have to say, I was pleased to see that <laughs> uh, because they're sleeping an hour more. Uh, on the other hand, I was a little surprised to see it. The reason why I say that is one interpretation of some of the data that I've shown you is that unemployed